Hello there, my name is Solmaz. You're listening to Tabling Thoughts Podcast. I'm going to talk about my experiences as a relationship coach and psychotherapist here. The little tiny points that I notice in my clients' life, which each of them affect the quality of their lives and relationships enormously. And for some reasons, they don't pay that much of attention to them. And of course, we know confidentiality is always here. Before we start today's episode, I just want to tell you a little bit more about myself. As I mentioned, I'm a relationship coach with the title of Effective Relationship Strategist. I also practice as a psychotherapist in Ontario, Canada. I live in Canada. I have immigrated more than a decade in Canada. I married a Canadian man and I have a son. I also have another podcast called Lam Ta Kala, which is in Farsi and it's specifically for my Farsi speaking audience. Lam Ta Kalam is a very well received podcast. More than 3 million downloads on CastBox as of today. The purpose of that podcast is to talk about the issues us Iranian, Farsi-speaking people as an immigrant face outside of Iran. So if you know anyone who speaks in Farsi and looking for that kind of content, Lam Ta Kalam is the place to go. All the info linked to my Instagram account and the information you may need is mentioned in description. So let us start today's episode. this episode, I'm going to talk about emotional blackmail. I have been working with many families, working with the dynamic of family members or loved ones specifically, showed me many try to control the relationship via emotionally blackmailing the other person. And then I came across a book called Emotional Blackmail by Susan Forward. Reading the book brought to my attention many statements many concepts that I didn't have a name to put on. And this book clarified many of them for me. So let's explore a bit more about this concept. Emotional blackmail is a manipulative tactic where individuals very close to us threaten us directly or indirectly to punish us if we don't comply with their desires. This kind of coercion is expressed through fear, obligation, and guilt, collectively known as fog, as Susan Forward puts it there. Let's see what this fog exactly stands for. Fear is when We are afraid to expose to something that the other party doesn't like us or facing consequences for not complying. The O in fog arises when we feel compelled to support or consent to their demands, often leveraging a sense of indebtedness. Obligation arises when we feel compelled to support or consent to their demands often leveraging a sense of owing the other party. And last but not least is guilt. Guilt is induced by the person who is blackmailing us, by making us feel guilty if we don't meet the way that they're requesting. There are some common signs of a blackmailing behavior that includes controlling behavior, blaming others, rationalizing unreasonable requests, intimidation, and false accusation. And at the end of the day, they threat that they will harm you, even emotionally, which is more important. Remember, people who are victims of this kind of emotional blackmailing, they feel insecure, they feel unvalued, and they struggle with low self-esteem, which genuinely breaks my heart. Because that person, the victim, is so vulnerable to this kind of manipulations. The stress of such relationships can have emotional and physical consequences for you. You will even try to compromise your integrity, your self-esteem, and it will lead you to isolate yourself and be lonely. Quite a dark space, right? The impact 
of this kind of emotional blackmailing extends to overall of your well-being contributing to anxiety and depression. Specifically people, the individuals whose upbringing has been based on blackmailing by their parents, they have kind of this tendency to put themselves in kind of personal experiences that makes them to be in toxic relationships dangerous conflicts specifically emotionally being in conflicts in different conflicts and they sacrifice their health they easily let other parties to violate their boundaries for the sake of keeping their relationship the way it is because they have been justifying their roles in each relationship as a victim they think if i'm not the victim if i'm not losing my identity if i'm not acting the way this person wants i will end up to a huge breakup then i will be nobody so i should fulfill what they ask for so here comes the question how can we identify the emotional blackmailers in our lives first and most importantly we should know that this kind of blackmailers mostly and unfortunately are the closest people in our lives because they have already passed plenty of boundaries to be so close to our wounds that we cannot ask them to leave our emotional space so identifying this kind of emotional blackmailers involves recognizing the red flags in their personalities such as making extreme threats or using emotional manipulation. Here, taking control of reactions and setting boundaries is crucial. Setting boundaries should be a daily practice of self-affirming statements and a commitment to activities that eliminates emotional blackmailer from various relationship threats. The difficulty in recognizing emotional blackmail is attribute to the reluctant to confront the uncomfortable truth of manipulation by a loved one. This is the part I have been working with plenty of my clients. It's extremely difficult to see someone who you love enormously is hurting you intentionally or unintentionally and accept it. Understanding and identifying emotional blackmail is extremely essential for those seeking to eliminate toxic relationship in their lives. That's why I chose this concept. I can't give you enough of examples of the clients are engaged in toxic relationships with their husbands, with their kids, with their parents, with their relatives, with their friends, colleagues, that they have been in kind of blackmailing situation because part of their identity is hooked to that relationship. And they think if I lose this relationship, I am nobody. Specifically for those who are familiar with the concept of narcissistic personality disorder, people who have the traits of this narcissistic personality, they use emotional blackmailing as the main tool to keep their victims in their emotional proximity. So let's see what we talked about. First, we talked about what is emotional blackmail. We used the writer's keyword in the whole book called FOG as fear, obligation, guilt. And we talked about the main step, which is identifying this kind of toxic interactions as an emotional blackmail. Resolving conflicts mainly requires to focus on fair solutions. And the first fair solution seems to be setting firm boundaries. Not every relationship conflict involves emotional blackmail. The crucial distinction lies in whether you feel good in each interaction or you feel that you have been imposed, you feel that there is some dominant negative energy or you feel that you literally cannot breathe. In order to enable the vicious circle of being a victim in this emotional blackmailing circle, the first step is to stop seeking validation from that person. Second, confrontation aversion. And third, working on your own self-esteem without getting validation from the other person. If you want to look for an instant way to avoid falling prey to emotional blackmailing, there are some simple steps that you can take. The first step is to resist reaction, immediate reaction to the blackmailer's behavior. You don't need to react on the spot. You can buy time to think about it. Because the blackmailer may attempt to create atmosphere of tension 
that makes the victims feel like they have to comply immediately or they may continue to suffer. To avoid this, as I said, you need to be firm, set boundaries and buy yourself some time. Always tell yourself that you don't need to answer the other party, the blackmailer on the spot. You can think and come back and you can tell them, I'm not ready to make the decision right now. Give me some time and definitely they will try to put you in more pressure because before you used to just say yes and go with it, right? You have to own your own priorities, which are just as important as theirs. And you cannot just say it, you need to do it. There are plenty of times that you say, oh, I don't want you to do that. I don't want to do this for you. I don't want to be in this situation. But you put yourself in that situation when it comes to action. So buy time, restore your energy, figure out how you can say no in more assertive and firm way. The next thing to do is detach yourself from the situation. Detachment helps to get some perspective on the conflict. If you're finding it hard to see things from the outside, then you need to ask yourself, what does this person want from me right now? How did they ask me? Did they bring it in words in a way that I felt that I owe them or they gave me some choice? And next, think about your emotional reactions if you think you are responsible for the blackmailer's happiness. If you don't do what they want, they will pressure you more or you will feel selfish to resent their demands. These are all red flags, my friends. If you're feeling trapped, frightened, frustrated, overwhelmed, angry or guilty, think about what triggers these feelings. Does your blackmailer give you the cold shoulder, roll their eyes, cry or shout? Or in some cases, they may even threat you they will hurt or harm themselves. These are all red flags, as I said. So my friends, I'm going to ask you to write these thoughts down for the final step. Making connections between the blackmailer's action and your reaction will help you to map out the whole idea of how an emotional blackmail starts and how it goes forward. And the last step will be setting boundaries and speaking up to the end of the cycle of emotional blackmailing. Know your boundaries, make it clear for yourself by mapping out your blackmailer's actions and your reaction. Their manipulative behavior is weighing on you. So don't let them to push you. Dig deeper and work out when your boundaries have been crossed. In this way, you will recognize what they're going to do furthermore in future and you can predict how to communicate your boundaries in a more effective way with them. Remember, communication is extremely crucial for this step. Don't attack them, don't be offensive, be understanding, frank and calm. I know it's very difficult, but you need to practice it. Honest disclosure, you will sweat, you will have fast heartbeat, you will have dry mouth, but it doesn't matter. Because expressing yourself in this way may in the beginning make you very nervous but eventually you're working on your self-confidence and you will be stronger and stronger going forward you can also be upfront and tell them that you won't be guilt trapped at the same time talk to yourself that this is not the end of the world and things may end differently if you go through this dark tunnel. Finally, remember that it will take time to change your blackmailer's habits and your relationship. Or you may eventually think that you should cut this relationship. But to improve the communication, set the new boundaries, and be careful regarding to your reflection are all what you need to make sure that in future you will no longer be the victim of emotional blackmail. It may also be the time to walk away, as I said, from the relationship if necessary. It all depends on how much you and the other party are willing to put into making a change.
My friends, I hope this episode helps you with identifying this kind of toxic relationship patterns, working on the three steps, and helping yourself to get out of this toxic interactions. Thank you very much for being with us. I hope this episode was helpful for you. Please write your comments and tell me which part you like the best. Until next episode, take care of yourself and be happy. 